It is now 19 minutes past eight. They, or should that we be we, in the quotes corporatist globalist media, are said to be producing fake news and are going to face a fight every single day. So said Steve Bannon, President Trump's chief strategist, who's labelled journalists the opposition party. So how on earth should the media respond? So Harry Evans is one of this country's greatest ever editors. He was at the helm of the Sunday Times in the late 60s and 70s, of course. He's lived in the United States for many years and he's in London for a discussion tonight organised by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism on how reporters can make a difference in the post-truth world. Morning to you, Sir Harry. So what sort of difference should we make? What language should we use? Now, you know, in the United States, the New York Times, for example, has regularly called Trump a liar. The Wall Street Journal, another respected paper, says, no, no, we don't want to use that language. It makes us look as if we are in the opposition. What's your view? Well, I, the argument they're making is that it has to be intent to deceive people. Now, the problem with Mr. Trump is that he has so many lies. He's like what Jonathan Swift said many, many years ago. You don't know which one to swat. He produces lies every time he exhales. So it's very hard to say, did he have intent to exhale that particular green, horrible fly suggesting that Hillary Clinton was going to let all the criminals out of jail? Surely that's, that's more than a liar. That's the mark of a madman. Well, that's the dilemma you have with Trump. Imagine uh, your back being an editor, though. You were an editor, as I well, said. Well, if I was being an editor, I would, I, I would certainly would use the word lie as appropriate. I think that's the, the point is there's a huge difference between a falsehood where you don't intend to deceive and Mr. Trump has zillions of falsehoods, zillions. Now, I'm not going to say, despite the, my divine powers, that I can go into the entrails of each of these falsehoods and say, this one he intended to deceive, this one he was ignorant, this one he was being malicious, this one was a joke. I don't know. All I know is that he proliferates lies like other people proliferate breathing. So you would default to using that sort of tough language, even if people then said, aha, he's right, you're in the opposition. Well, that's a very good point indeed, and that's the trap. In fact, I, the Reuters, I don't responsible for Reuters, although I'm, I work there, and I think they're much more restrained, and I respect that restraint, as indeed I respect it from the editor of the Wall Street Journal. A more important question, really, which I can't answer, and maybe you can with your clinical experience answer this for me, which is, he's either a compulsive liar or else he has a personality disorder and can't tell the difference. <laughs> if only I could uh, answer those questions. There are, of course, people who suggest that Donald Trump is not lying because he didn't know the truth when he spoke. Well, the he said what he is, thought was the case. Well, th that's quite true. But when the truth is presented to him uh, and he can see that, that this colour is really is black and nothing like white, and he reiterates, I like that black colour, then you begin to think, well, what is he? So he's actually, he's a chameleon, of course, but the, the more important thing underlying all of this thing is, of course, the campaign by Mr. Bannon and people like him, like a Tea Party woman I heard on the radio the other day, say, there ain't such thing as facts. What is these funny things called facts? All we have to know is what people believe. And if a majority of people believe X, well, X is what a majority of people should believe. But we have to take that sort of thing seriously, don't we? Because there was an opinion poll uh, produced, admittedly, by Fox News, by, carried out by them by respected pollsters, that said more people, just marginally, trusted Donald Trump to tell the truth than trusted those reporting on him. The media has to examine its own flaws, doesn't it? Well, they that. There is the, I mean, look, has the British press been perfect? I always told the truth, got it factually right. Not even in my sacred time could I claim that. The point is that, and you look at the, the hacking scandal, obviously the press in, in Britain in particular, and you shouldn't believe it when they said there is no hacking scandal. However, the, we have to realise also that people who say we believe Donald Trump whatever he says, are actually mentally deluded themselves. And I'll say that again, they are mentally deluded themselves. First of all, they haven't studied the issues. They've drunk the Kool-Aid. 
It's, it's a strong phrase, though, for people who simply disagree with you. And let's be honest, you were a, a, a supporter of Hillary Clinton. You and your wife are close. Well, Clinton. I was a supporter of independent and honest reporting. Okay. You won't fight... You won't, you, I'm not going to be identified because I've kept most of my life not identified. I've supported Mrs. Thatcher in an election. I've supported James Callaghan. I've supported Hillary Clinton. I've supported... So I want to give you one last chance to react to something you yourself said just a few years ago. Must be true. Which gets us on <laughs> onto the issue of technology. Here it is. This is you speaking in, in our time in 1998. One of the reasons I think America is going to flourish in the next century too is the prolixity, density and fecundity of the information systems and the, the web and the net. And it's making a, a curious kind of new kind of democracies emerging with that. Everybody's joining in. What everyone, I think, was struck by was that you were an optimist. Are you now become a pessimist about the impact? Well, it's very difficult because we have Facebook lying and the proliferation. And in America, they don't study history, so parallels are very hard to draw. When you said, "Remember Suez," what what was that? A pudding, you know. So you, <coughs> I did say in 1979. The, the way of the future is a television screen with two columns on it, one for research and one for writing. So I, I'm not a, a, a Luddite. I've always been. In fact, in 1976, I was the person who introduced, le the leading figure who introduced computers into journalism, and we could not get the trade unions to agree. Well, we remember that, but that might be another hour of the programme. Well, let's, have another, uh, let's have a lot of time on this because yeah. it's very hard to get the, for the <laughs> press to cover somebody who is such a chameleon, with such effect. When Donald Trump says, I did not press the nuclear button to the president of Russia, do you believe him? Discuss. And we will be because you've got a new book coming out saying, "Do I called Do I Make Myself Clear? It's coming out in May. And uh, if you want some of the nostalgia too, I recently read Sir Harry's memoirs and well worth reading as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. <laughs>